You're listening to a CNA podcast. Before K-pop took the world by storm, J-pop led Asia's music scene. With a steady churn of fresh young faces, upbeat music, choreographed dance moves, and outfits that set the trends of the day. And behind a lot of the most popular groups and artists of the last 50 years was a man called Johnny Kitagawa and his company, Johnny and Associates. But there was a dark secret. Japan's largest talent agency, Johnny and Associates, has announced that it would change its name after admitting to decades of sexual abuse by its late founder, Johnny Kitagawa. The agency also offered to discuss relief measures and compensation to victims. When this story broke, I had so many questions. Ones that you probably have too. Like, who is Johnny Kitagawa? How did he get away with it for so long? And what does this mean for the victims of the abuse going forward, as well as the industry as a whole? And to help give you these answers is our Japan correspondent, Michio Ishida. Michio, good to have you on. Thank you for having me, Steve. Okay, now let's get to it then. Johnny Kitagawa, he died in July of 2019. But tell our listeners who might not be familiar with him, who he was and what place Johnny and Associates has held in Japan's pop culture landscape. Well, Johnny Kitagawa is regarded as the kingmaker of Japanese show business. Uh, he led an all-male talent agency, which is regarded as one of Japan's biggest entertainment agencies. And this agency was founded back in 1962. His name was stamped in the Guinness Book of World Records for over 200 number one hits between 1974 and 2010 in Japan. So there isn't anyone in Japan that hasn't heard of him or haven't heard of some of the acts that he would have been masterminding. Well, of course, everybody knows. Everybody would know. Even me, I've lived abroad for a long time. But if I um, came back to Japan, turn on the TV, I see somebody from Johnny's, somebody on TV, movies, you hear them on radio, whatever media. It was just a normal thing to hear a Johnny's talent. So you remember some of these bands and these artists. I'm sure a lot of people you mixed with as well would have known them growing up with them. It goes back, you know, so many decades. What did you think about when you first heard the news break? Actually, I wasn't that surprised because we were hearing speculations of sexual abuse by Johnny Kitagawa years back. But, you know, none of the major Japanese media outlets highlighted the incident. So the surprise was that it actually broke. Really? Mm. So it was, it was like an open secret? Uh, yeah, it was something like an open secret. But we do know that a weekly daily called uh, Shukan Bunshu uh, was um, doing stories on a possible sexual abuse by Johnny Kitagawa. However, other media outlets didn't, you know, pick up this story in a big way. Just Bunshu kept on running these stories. And actually, back in 1999, Johnny and Associates decided to start a lawsuit against this magazine because they thought that they were ruining their reputation. And so took the issue to court. And what happened was that the court decided that Johnny Kitagawa was involved in sexual abuse. Wow. So this actually goes back decades then. Right, right. And how many victims are we talking about? Okay, we don't have exact figure because, you know, many were not talking. Many didn't want to talk. But what happened was that after the sexual abuse incident became big in Japanese media, we heard from Noriyuki Higashiyama, who is now manning the so-called Johnny's associate. Now it's called Smile Up. He said on September 30th that up to 478 came out to say they were victims and 325 sought for compensation. That's an incredible number. But I mean, it does go back the decades and multiple acts over that time. What sort of details have emerged about the abuse victims and what abuse they suffered? And how did it finally come to light? Like, what was the straw that broke the camel's back? Because these allegations of this abuse had been around for such a long time. Well, if you want me to describe the abuse these victims suffered, I don't think I would want to explicitly, you know, describe it because it is quite gruesome. I have visited one victim, went to his home to have a private chat with them, and he told me that uh, Johnny Kitagawa would come into his bedroom from time to time and touch him. And it was pretty bad the way he was touched. It was almost like rape. I would call it a rape. 
Anyway, he suffered this for many, many days during the time he was there. He was with Johnny for about three years, he told me. And during that time, multiple sexual abuse cases. And after he was assaulted by Kitagawa, he would be given an allowance. And he said that he actually shared this story with other young trainees of Johnny's. And they were given allowances too. But depending on the person, some received 10,000 yen, some received 30,000 yen, some received even more. And this was to be paid for their silence? That seems to be the case, or for their so-called service, perhaps. Mm. Okay. It is re- really gruesome. It is. Yeah. It is rather grim. Now, mm. I mentioned that Kirigawa himself died in 2019. He never faced any charges uh, for any of this. That can't sit well with the victims. How did? How's the one you spoke to? How did he respond? Well, he was at least happy that the incidents have come out in the open. Now people are aware of what's happened. So, you know, he can actually claim for compensations. Uh, One of the victims, you know, I spoke to told me that he had been suffering from depression after leaving Johnny's. He tried to look for jobs, but he couldn't keep up with the job. He was depressed. He couldn't sleep because, you know, facing abuse, you know, it happened like at midnight. And he's still suffering from PTSD. So the victims really want to receive compensations for the damage, also psychologically. Yeah, the trauma certainly of these sorts of incidents would certainly linger on. And you would hope that perhaps now that this has all come to light, that there may be some movement towards getting the compensation that you mentioned and perhaps reaching some closure. Was that something that was talked about amongst the victims? Okay, the closure, we don't know if there's going to be a real closure because mm. they do need to undergo therapy. And they do want Johnny's and associates to provide some kind of therapy as well as compensations mm. because they are mentally suffering. Uh, for instance, the victim I spoke to told me that because he couldn't work, he's living under public support And that's very little money. He's living in this very tiny uh, apartment in the outskirts of Tokyo. He's eating just one meal a day because he can't pay for his meals. So the reality is he really needs the money to survive. And he needs therapy in order to be able to live without thinking about committing suicide. And he said Mm -hmm. that he did attempt suicide several times. And that's the case with other victims that he's been sharing his stories with. Next on CNA Correspondent, you'll hear how Johnny & Associates has rebranded itself as Smile Up as it seeks to make amends for its founders' abuses. Are you looking for ways to make your money work harder? Tips on saving, investing or retiring early perhaps? Or advice on big-ticket decisions like buying a house or owning a car? I'm Andrea Heng host of CNA's top personal finance podcast, Money Talks. And these are some of the things we find out for you. Each week, I get a guest to share personal stories and answer burning questions that help you make sense of the latest financial trends. Go check out the complete Money Talks playlist on the CNA app, Spotify, Google or Apple Podcasts. You're listening to CNA Correspondent with me, Steve Lai, alongside Michio Ishida, as we discuss the fallout from revelations of decades of sexual abuse at one of Japan's most well-known talent agencies, Johnny & Associates. Here's current president, Noriyuki Higashiyama, talking about the rebranding efforts that are underway. For the future of the entertainment industry, we decided to start a new company. With the support of our fans, we will improve by refreshing our previous management efforts and training programs. Michio, tell us more about the current president then, Mr. Higashiyama. I understand he himself was one of Kitagawa's protégés and also has similar accusations that have been leveled against him. Right. Higashiyama was actually a superstar. He was a member of a three-man group called Shonen Tai. They were really good at dancing and singing. And after they decided to dissolve the group, that was back in the 1990s, Higashiyama has remained successful as an actor. He played leading roles, and he had his own news program. Uh, He's been manning that program until this year, actually. 
He married popular actress Yoshino Kimura, so he had a very good life as a star. It was really surprising when we heard this year that he was taking over Johnny's leadership because we never heard of his experience with management of a company. But you know, the fact that he's now the face would change the mood, or at least the fans' a way of viewing Johnny's and Associates, which is now called Smile Up. Yes, there were allegations of Higashiyama being abusive to young Johnny's trainees. But when he was questioned about that during a news conference this year, he said that I haven't abused any of them. Maybe I was a bit harsh. He did know that there were sexual abuse cases, but he was young back then, so he didn't actually take action. But he is sorry that he did not do anything about it. And did did he say if he was a, himself a victim? Ah, uh, he did not say that. And what's been the public response to this scandal then, and to the victims that have come forward? Johnny Kitagawa has been a fixture in Japan's pop culture scene for decades. Many were surprised, especially for fans. I mean, there are many diehard fans out there. I believe that to get tickets to even watch a Johnny's related concert was very competitive. In fact, some years back, I actually do have diehard Johnny's fans, and they will ask me when they have extra tickets to come along. I missed one, which was with SMAP, which was a very popular group. They decided to go their own ways after that year. I went to one concert of a group co- called Kinky Kids, and I went together with her. It was really like a big thing. And, you know, you can imagine if this negative kind of scandal comes out, the fans would be super, super shocked. And that's what's been happening. And Public Broadcaster NHK has been, you know, like, having them on their shows many times, almost every day. And they've actually uh, decided to run an analysis program on what went wrong. (sighs) Why did this happen? And why did the media remain silent? So the media is actually also apologetic about the fact that they remain silent about all this, of all the scandals that's happened, and they didn't talk about it. Yeah, there's an interesting aspect to it, that the media almost by their silence, were enabling uh, this to carry on happening and to keep on happening to these you know, young men that were trying to make it in the industry. Has there been public reaction or backlash towards the media or, or towards the industry as a whole? Because you know, ultimately these acts, they themselves have been, or the people involved in them have been the victims of it. And then if they get then boycotted by the public as a result, they're doubly punished. Right, that's right. Well, you know, a lot of um, Japanese media are deciding to end the contract with a Johnny's related artist. If there's, for instance, an entertainment program that's going on and on, they deciding that, okay, we're not going to work with these artists anymore when their term ends. For instance, Japanese big companies, they've been using a lot of Johnny's artists as their the main, you know, the endorser of their products. And now they don't want them to be endorsers of their products. So some of them are trying to end the contract. But on the other hand, they're saying, okay, if we can sign a contract with them individually, not as a Johnny's artist, then mm. we would like to continue using them. And that seems to be happening because they do individually have very good image coming mm. out as, you know, shiny, sparkling artists, you know, kind to animals, for instance, you know, coming out, you know, a very warm on TV shows. So, you know, there are these diversified uh, reactions towards Johnny's artists, whereas towards Johnny's and associate, the agency itself, of course, people are really feeling negative about the group. Okay, now one J-pop star, Kaon Akamoto, he revealed that he was abused by Kitigawa when he was just 15 years old. This is how young some of them are going. Uh, so he said that while he hated his actions, he actually had, and this is a quote from him, no hate in my heart for Johnny. And he added that he was actually grateful to him for introducing him to the world of music. Were there other more angry responses from the victims? Well, yes. You know, there were victims who actually tried to speak out years before this happened. Mm. And they tried to be heard, but no one wanted to listen to them because if they had any interest with Johnny's and Associates, then it will hurt their cooperative relationship with Johnny's. And that will hurt their business because mm. having a Johnny artist on their shows, on their ads, really helped them to you know, attract the attention of the public and sell their goods, for instance. With these victims now being heard, it's a good thing for many of these victims because they're being heard and now they might get a 
huge compensation. So even though they are, you know, really angry, they're happy that they're being heard. Yeah, and this must have been a sort of a wake up call for Japan's entertainment industry on the whole. Are there other stories now emerging from other entities like Johnny and Associates or other companies like that? Actually, the focus is still very much on Johnny's, not on other entertainment agencies. So people are wondering, okay, what are these artists who are still linked to Johnny's or still a member of Johnny's going to do? Mm. Are they going to stay with Johnny's and Associates? Or are they going to leave the agency and go on their own? Because in the past few years, there were many actually leaving Johnny and Associates to be active on their own in the entertainment business. But because Johnny was pressuring those media or the companies um, not to use them because they were no longer Johnny's, mm. you know, they had a very tough time to go into good business on their own. But now that things have changed, now that Johnny and Associates is on, under a big backlash, you know, the environment has totally changed. Yeah, and they've tried to rebrand themselves as a company called Smile Up. How much traction do you think they're going to get from that? And for the new president, uh, Mr. Higashiyama, do you think that they are going to end up sort of winding down the business? Or what's the next step for them? Actually, the job of Small Up is to talk to the victims and to solve this scandalous situation. So when they complete the compensations dealing with the victims, they intend to dissolve the Small Up agency mm. and to form a separate entity where they can focus on entertainment again. So basically, this company is about compensation. Oh, okay. So they've sort of set this up primarily to deal with the fallout from all of this. And then once that's resolved itself, they will then try and reemerge in under another banner. Right. That's correct. Okay. And for the victims themselves, I suppose, on an individual basis, we'll have to wait and see what uh, comes of them. Uh, do you think you'll be following up with the, the singer that you spoke to? Yeah, I would like to continue talking to him. But the thing is, he used to be open to holding news conferences with mm. other victims. Now it seems like there's an issue, like they're clashing between victims of their interest. And also, because they've been speaking out loud in public, they're receiving negative reactions from the public on social media and they're becoming even more depressed now because of all the backlash from the public because they're speaking out against Johnny's and they've caused this issue of making Johnny's um, change themselves and the Johnny artists will not be able to appear on TV and in public as much as they used to. So, so could you just explain that to me then? So you're saying these artists that have come forward and acknowledged that these things that happened to them, that they were on the receiving end of all this abuse, right. they are now getting backlash from the fans for bringing down the Johnny and Associates name? Exactly, yeah. And one aspect that people are arguing about is that the so-called victims actually didn't make it up there. So isn't that why that they're coming out to say, yes, we were victims and we want this compensation? If they became stars, they probably wouldn't remained you know silent never spoke about it oh you're saying because they didn't make it big uh -huh. in the industry they were not necessarily the biggest performers they were right. more on the lower level right that they're the ones that are making the noise yes wow yeah so it's very ironic the situation yeah and it's just going on and on we have bigger issues in the world to discuss but the Japanese media, you know, in the past they remained silent. Now it's all over the place on Japanese media, this Johnny's issue. And now they can't stop talking about it. No. Nope. All right. Well, Michio, thank you so much. We're out of time. But thank you so much for coming in and speaking to me about it. I feel like I've learned a lot about the Japanese media industry as well as the Japanese public as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. Watching a music video by a band like Arashi, you'd get the sense that these young men have the world at their feet and their lives are just a happy procession of positive vibes only. But behind the gloss and the glamour lies a familiar cautionary tale of the entertainment industry. From Harvey Weinstein and the Me Too movement in the US to Johnny Kitagawa in Japan, men in power prey on the young and hopeful and are able to get away with it until they aren't. The TV version of CNA Correspondent airs on CNA every Wednesday at 9.30 p.m. You can also catch up with it whenever and wherever you like on cna.asia. Do you like and subscribe to this podcast version that takes you behind the scenes with our correspondents? It's available on our website and our mobile app, as well as Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. Thank you for listening. Our podcast team is made up of Sai Win, Crispina Robert, Clara Ong, and me, Steve Lyon.